and can have the same impact. It's defined as an emotional wound. To a core relationship with a caregiver, often caused by abuse, neglect, or inconsistency of care in early childhood. Trauma and attachment injury can impact our recovery and meditation practice in slightly different ways. With trauma we may feel fear even panic or distrust when asked to sit in meditation even when intellectually we know we're in a safe place with a supportive group. It may be triggering to be asked to be present in our bodies and minds, or to focus on our breath. It might also feel unsafe when your identity is uniquely different from the majority of the Sangha. Attachment injury may show up as a hesitation to trust people, or a process, as a reluctance to be part of a recovery group or Sangha, or as a core belief that we don't belong. In this case, the nurturing thing to do for ourselves might be to lean into this discomfort compassionately, engage, and investigate the stories we're telling ourselves about not be. Dash. Learning. Again, it's key to become aware of the nature of the harm we carry with us. Trauma and attachment injury may require different ways of feeling safe and supported. You should always do whatever is most compassionate for yourself in the moment and seek outside help when you need it. Trauma and attachment issues are relevant to suffering and add dash diction because they can have a huge impact on our mental and physical health studies show that those who struggle with addiction have often experienced trauma at some point in their lives what we try and use to make us feel better whether it's substances or behaviors often only reinforces the cycle of aversion and craving that will lead to more sooth. Dash. Faring. The brain can be overactive when trauma is present because it perceives a very real threat, and the body often responds with feelings of helplessness, fear, and vulnerability. This system can be easily thrown into Overdrive when one's life experience screams, you're not safe. Danger. Danger. Even when the danger is no longer present. For some people, post-traumatic symptoms may be increasingly severe and last long after the original events have ended. Many of us have intrusive thoughts that seem to come out of the blue, or we feel confusion or mood swings we can't link to specific events. Traumatic responses may lead us to avoid activities or places that trigger memories of the event. We can become socially isolated and withdrawn, and lose interest in things we used to enjoy. Post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, may cause us to be Easily startled, edgy, have impaired function during sex or other activities. Or unusually alert to potential danger. Overwhelming fear, anxiety, detachment and isolation, shame, and anger may become background states of our activities. Many other Effects of trauma may be triggered by social interactions, work, or metadata. Dash. Tion. Areas that may be completely disconnected from the original events. Race-based trauma, as well as trauma from any experience of discrimination or bigotry, can accumulate over a lifetime. When these Incidents are considered separately, they might appear manageable, but 
When experienced cumulatively, they can become extremely difficult to cope with the distress, fear, and physical body responses that may arise. From this kind of trauma often overlap with the symptoms of PTSD. Trauma and attachment injury can lead to the fear, anger, angst, dash, IAT, guilt, and loneliness that are common responses to various life acts, dash, appearances. But, at a deeper level, trauma makes it harder for us to cope. In general, to form healthy or safe relationships, to develop an identity in the world, or to defend ourselves. No two of us will react to the same experience in the same way, but this truth points to the fact that certain past experiences can affect our responses later in life. This is key to under dash standing dukkha, and to meeting our experience with wise boundaries. Compassion, kindness, and courage rather than judgment for others in ourselves which is an essential part of recovery. Many of us turn to addictive substances and behaviors as a way to cope with our trauma, sometimes running from the pain of our Experiences by way of our addictions was itself a survival technique from feeling that we wouldn't be able to live through the pain of our memories. While this may have provided some temporary relief, it did nothing to actually heal the pain of our trauma, and often led to even more pain. Our trauma is not our fault, but healing from it is our response C. Dash. Ability, and our right. Developing understanding and compassion toward. The way trauma affects our reactions to events or circumstances in the. Present moment is an important part of that healing. Inquiry of the first noble truth. Colon. Begin by making a list of the behaviors and actions associated with your addictions that you consider harmful. Without exaggerating or minimizing, think about the things you have done that have pre dash aided additional suffering to yourself and others. For each behavior listed, write how you and others have suffered because of that behavior. List any other costs or negative consequences you can think of, such as finances, health, relationships, sexual relations, or missed opera. Dash. Tunities. Do you notice any patterns? What are they? What are the ways that you might avoid or reduce suffering for yourself and others if you change these patterns. How have your addictive behaviors been a response to trauma and pain? What are some ways you can respond to trauma and pain that nurture healing rather than avoidance? If you have experienced trauma from discrimination, what are ways you can experience healing and practice self-care. Consider Hopper. Dash. Tunities to support social justice while allowing yourself to heal in. Practice compassion for yourself and others. The second noble truth. The cause of suffering. As people who have become dependent on substances and be. Dash. Behaviors, we've all experienced the sense of failure and hopelessness that comes from trying, and failing, to let go of our fixations. Addiction itself increases our suffering by creating a hope that both pleasure and escape can be permanent. We go through this suffering again and again because 
substances or behaviors can only give us temporary relief to our pain, our unhappiness, and our lost or damaged sense of self. Our refusal to accept the way things are leads to wanting, or craft, dash, in, which is the cause of suffering. This excludes discrimination based suffering and harm which do not need to be accepted, but met with wise boundaries, wise action, and compassion. We don't suffer because of the way things are, but because we want, or think we, need those things to be different. We suffer because we cling to the idea that we can satisfy our own cravings, while ignoring the true nature of the world around us. Above all, we cling to the idea that we can hold on to impermanent and unreliable things, things that can't ever lead to real sad. Dash. Disfaction or lasting happiness, without experiencing the suffering of one day losing them. Clinging to impermanent solutions for suffering results in crab. Dash. In. We experience craving like a thirst, an unsatisfied longing, and it can become a driving force in our lives. If craving goes beyond simple desire, which is a natural part of life, it often leads us to fixation, obsession, and the delusional belief that we can't be happy without getting what we crave. It warps our intentions so that we make choices that harm our dash selves and others. This repetitive craving and obsessive drive to satisfy it leads to what we now know as addiction. Addiction occupies the part of our mind that chooses our will and replaces compassion, kindness, generosity, honesty, and other intentions that might have been there. Many of us experience addiction as the loss of our freedom to choose, it's the addiction that seems to be making our choices for us in the way we must have food, shelter, or water, our mind can tell us we must have some substance, buy or steal something, satisfy some lust, keep acting until we achieve some needed result that we must protect ourselves at all cost and attack people with whom we dis dash agree are people who have something we want this need also leads to an unsettled or agitated state of mind that tells us we'll only be happy if we get certain results or feel a certain way we want to be someone we're not or we don't want to be who we are conditions or circumstances in and of themselves don't cause suffering. They can cause pain or unpleasant experiences, but we add suffering on top of this when we think we need those circumstances to be different. We create even more suffering when we act out in ways that deny the reality of the circumstances and the reality of impermanence. Craving is the underlying motive that fuels unwise actions that create suffering. Inquiry of the Second Noble Truth. Colon. List situations, circumstances, and feelings that you have used harm. Dash. Full behavior to try to avoid. Name the emotions, sensations, and thoughts that come to mind. When you abstain, are there troubling memories, shame, grief, or unmet needs behind the craving? How can you meet these with calm, dash, passion and patience? What things did you give up in your clinging to impermanent and un 
unreliable solutions. For example, 